Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Today, I thought it would be fun to play with, um, you know, these are these reply envelopes or business envelopes like you get from banks and utility companies and I don't even know what all. Um, and they have, they have these pretty patterns, the safety patterns on the inside of them. And I have discovered this fun thing to do. So here's, um, well, here. Part one is here is an envelope. This must have been a reply envelope. Um, and you can tell it has the pretty pattern on the inside and gray is kind of a nice color. I have, I have these opinions about the colors. Um, my electric bill comes in a green envelope and it has a green pattern on the inside for safety. And I don't know, it's, it's sort of a um, little bit of a brash green, I'm not in love. Um, so I don't save those. I, um, yeah, I can't even remember where all these come from. And they have different patterns, right? So here is this sort of um, crosshatch thing. And this almost looks like a wood grain pattern. Well, anyway, so this is nice. And you can certainly use this. And you can take other papers, you know, and cover the outside. And then you still get this on the inside, which is very nice. But I kind of like it when I um, tear these open. It's kind of a tricky thing. And it really depends how much glue they used right here. Some envelope companies... Don't use very much glue at all there. So this is the trick. You um oops. See sometimes you can come at it from the side and get it not tearing too much. I don't know, this is confusing. See now it's well anyway. I can do. Come on, fingers, you can work. See, this is just white from the white side of the envelope that's there. And we don't need that. So I can tear this off, but I don't want to tear off any of the pattern stuff that's right there. There, that's kind of it. And what I can do, see how there's little pieces that have come up so I can take with my little skinny glue, skinny neck glue bottle, um, put just a little bit of glue on there. And then I get more pattern on the paper and less white torn place. So then you turn it inside out using all the same folds. Oops, let's do the side over there. All right. Actually, let's move this stuff over. So we're turning this all inside out. Now, here's a thing that happens, and this is a judgment call for us. Um, if I have this flap on the outside, then there's this big glue strip there. So there are two things I can do here. I could just that off which actually is not a bad idea and pretty much I don't know if you can tell but the white starts there the thing is the more space I have to glue the more 
um, solid the envelope is. So I think I will choose to glue over the glue strip and put this on. But because I don't need that, I can take... I don't need this whiteness here for... Um, to sort of sort of ensure the solidity of the gluing process. So I can just cut that off and then look, there's no white stuff. Now there still is a little white here. So let's also test oops, the sides. This will be nicer if I have this flap on the outside and then we sort of miss that um, the white torn look, which can be a look and isn't necessarily a bad thing. But we do get this little rectangle. And I think if I kind of... Yeah, I'm going to do it and see what happens. What if I cut off all of the white area? Like that. Um, I glued that down. Would there still be overlap between right here and right here? And yes, there would be. So I think I'm also going to cut this off. The fact is, even though it's not perfect, and even though the pattern isn't blending perfectly, our eyes, when we're first looking at it, don't, A, don't see it, and B, we can always like put washi tape over the top or put a little decoration or a cluster or an embellishment there. So on this side... Well, there's this weird little place here that uh, the printing didn't actually catch. But I think what I'm going to do is... Actually, I like that better. So on this side, I'm going to glue the little short side flap underneath. And on this side, I'm going to glue it over the top. And I think we're going to do that piece by piece. So I don't really want glue close to the edge because this doesn't quite come all the way to the edge. And I did put a little too much glue right there. So we'll wipe that off. Press that down. And where this paper was torn, I can either say, oh, I meant that to be there, um, and pretend that I like it as a design element, or I can make it look like I'm just ignoring it, or I could put, again, you know, a piece of washi tape over the top or a little embellishment. And then let's glue right over the top of that glue strip. That all down. And then here. So there's a little bit of space and see there, there's a little bit of white space where I don't want to glue or else it's going to, I don't want to glue here, or else it's going to um, stick the envelope together. So I have to be kind of careful. Maybe just glue right along the edge there. That. Now, what the reason why it doesn't matter that I glued this 
end of the envelope differently that I'm than I'm gluing this end of the envelope is that I'm going to cut this in half and you know what let's be precise and use one of these now usually I cut let's see if you can yeah you can see in the reflection um, that the little plastic window um, piece of acetate stuff um, stops right there so usually I cut it right there so I can have one tall envelope and one pretty short envelope. But you know what I'm just seeing right here? Obviously the, the printing, can you tell? The printing kind of stops and starts. So clearly the repeat of the pattern stopped right there. So let's cut it right there. Look at that. So now I have these two really cool pockets. And the other reason why sometimes it doesn't matter what's going on on the back is that if you have a book, this is our pretend book, you can put glue on this side and you could do a, a three glue pocket. So when you glue it down, you can come in from here. And then right there, you know what we can do? Sorry, great nudging around. So we can put a little thumb divot. And I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm not going to center it, but I'm going to put it off to the side so the divot doesn't get too close to the window. And I think that'll work. So I can glue the pocket on three sides that way or on three sides this way. So I could have put, put a, let's test this. So I could put a card in this way or I could put a card in this way and see, then you see, and it's this cute pocket and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, covering these envelopes with pretty paper. I like the idea of having this be the entry point for the top part of the envelope and this be the entry point for the bottom part of the envelope. So I think I would do that. I mean, you know, or you can glue the whole thing and um, put it on. Now this one, I think... I can get the bottom of this is really wide, so I can't always get that in there. No, I can't, but what happens? Nothing. Okay, so that doesn't work. So that means that I have to put my thumb divot sort of in the middle. I think that's right. Let's try a little bit wider card. This would be a good size card for this because it sticks up above. You, you can't tell what's inside. You can hardly tell it's a pocket. So it would be nice to use a little bit taller tag that um, sticks out a little bit so you can tell what's going on, especially because the background paper is a little busy. So I don't know if I finished that thought, but I really do like the gray envelopes and the blue envelopes. So I wanted to go through that with you, but I also have this sort of intriguing envelope here. I'm spilling things. Um, it has a big tear in it. So this doesn't have a window on it, but it does have really pretty hashtags on the inside. This is my post office box. It's not really a big secret. So let's just 
and I fold that in half. Oh, I know what I can do here. La la la. Oops, wrong side. This side. And now what I can do is cut a little bit off the top. Now, this would be a ridiculously huge envelope. I mean, this isn't going to fit, you know, into a into most books. So what if I cut this in half again? And now the way I will cut this is to cut this side, making a little glue tag. over here, right? So that can become the tag on that side. And then on this side, I'll cut it, see, I cut it this side of the fold. There's the fold. Let's do this for you. So you can tell. Here's the fold, right there. And you can see that I that the cut came down beyond the fold on this side. And on this side, we're going to go up a little bit. Although we don't have to go up very far. Cut scissors. All right. So... Here we go. We're going to tear this envelope apart because I want to turn the um, envelope inside out again so I get the pattern part on the, I'm trying to see how many minutes I've done. It's really humid today and, ooh, look. Nice, nice. Now again, we have a lot of torn paper on this side and a lot of the white. It's not, and now I'm tearing it even more. But the flap on this one, if I cut off, I guess I won't cut that off. But I can cut off the little whiteness right here on that edge. And then this will get folded there. See, that's where the, when it was inside out, that's where the fold for when I folded this in half. Um, and now I can fold this in that way. Let's cut just a little bit out there so it doesn't bunch up on the fold here and fold this here ta-da and again there's a little space right here that I can't glue so I'm going to come up a little and I left it too long and it dried out Let's put this one on first. And um, just so you know, this is not art glitter glue in this bottle. This is Elmer's um, glue all, not the school glue. The school glue's pretty watery, but the glue all is a little heftier. Not very hefty, but heftier. And um, so I just keep refilling this with a big bottle of 
glue wool because this is my paper to paper so it doesn't need anything too fancy now this one figure out how to sharpen this punch it's not working there. there's something you're supposed to be able to do with um you punch fold tin foil in a couple of layers like maybe three or four layers and do a couple of punches on the tin foil and the metal to metal apparently sharpens the the paper um the punch a little bit and then you do the same thing with waxed paper like three or four layers and you punch a couple times through the wax paper and the wax from the wax paper I don't think it's really wax but whatever it is um, it it uh, makes these edges run a little more smoothly so now we have albeit a large envelope, but it would fit into a, the half of an office paper. Um, and then you would just need, yeah, a nice tall tag. Ta-da! And you can see it, and you've got plenty of room here, and you could add anything else, some kind of a little embellishment trying to find da, da, yeah for heaven's sakes here we are in the middle of all this abundance I mean I could add you know like one there and one there and do sort of layered pocket things and I could three glue that so that I could get in here and three glue the gray one so I could get in here that does begin to bulk out one's pages quite a bit however it's an idea you know you can play or you could put a little collage or just a little tuck spot I used to have I, think I made another one of these boxes um, there's a tag you could use this as a tuck spot and add a little tag in there and ornament things up a little bit Yes, I could do that. Uh, so there's that. And then the last thing I wanted to do, you know, I'm going to make a part two because we're just going to, it's going to be too much. So um, here are just some lovely pocket. Wouldn't this be like a really fun pocket because the window is so big. on that. Isn't that cool? You get to see so much of whatever you put on the inside. By the way, these were um, crumpled pieces of deli paper that I put on my jelly plate. And I think you can see there's sort of a line down here. So I must have done a first generation print and a second generation print somehow on the same print. Yeah, so, yay. Um, I'll do a part two, and I'll take you through what to do if you have, you know, that torn envelope one that I was going to show you that I hid somewhere. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so when we have great torn messiness um, and what we can do to fix that I mean make it still usable because <gasps> yes so here's my blessing today um may you find perfectly good uses for everything in your life including mail envelopes from whoever it is who's sending out these really great safety envelopes to us for free.
people give us cool stuff for free. They just, they pay the postage they pay to send us cool stuff in the mail. And we're so lucky. So I, I wish you the ability and the, and the many opportunities. I wish you many opportunities to feel grateful for all the free cool stuff that happens to us in our lives, like sunshine and heat, which is nice to think about in the summer, but it's really nice to think about in the winter. Yeah, whatever. Whatever it is, you've got to be grateful. I hope you have lots of opportunities to feel happy and delighted by people sending you free cool stuff. And the sparkles spread out from Maine across the world to you and everybody. So uh, yeah, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.